Okay, YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam, and thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a little bit. So today I've got a cool tool that I just want to let you guys know about. Um, you know, a lot of times you'll see tools in, in online and, you know, people are talking about them or see them on their channel or whatever, and you're like, eh, you know, I've got something that works. And for the longest time, I have known that there are Eclipse tools out there for putting those tiny little painted butt Eclipse on, but, you know... I've always been able to manage with a little pair of needle nose pliers or whatever. So I have some shocks to build. Um, these are some more of the 5520s. Um, put them on my lunchbox. So I figured while I'm going to build that, I wanted to show you guys this. So this is an awesome little tool from Dynamite Tools. Um, and it's specifically for, you know, putting on and taking off Eclipse. Um, it ranges in sizes from 1.5 millimeter up to a five millimeter Eclipse. So this should take care of anything you're doing with RC. Um, folds up into a tiny little package. You can just toss it in your toolbox and won't take up much room. And, you know, I thought it may be a gimmick, but, you know, it works really, really well. Now, even though it works really, really well, there is a few little tiny things you need to know about it when you start working with it to make life easier. So I'm going to bring the camera over, um, I'll get some shock parts out, and we'll actually put some stuff together real quick just to show you how it works. Alright guys, so here is the dynamite tool. So like I said, everything folds up really nice and compact, teeny little thing, and then you just slide out the one you want. They're labeled here, um, can't see it, but they are labeled for the sizes. Like I said, there's 1.5. 2.5, 2 3, 4, and 5 millimeter um, sizes to fit the clips. Now, the interesting thing about these is there is an up and a downside. So the unmarked side is the downside of the tool. The marked side is the upside of the tool. Well, for at least this demonstration. So I'm going to fold all but two of them out of the way here. So we're going to keep the 2 and the 5 out. So, I don't know if it's going to pick it up on camera, but if you can see that there's a tiny little groove in the inside of this, because it kind of looks just like a, a little tiny wrench almost, but, you know, round, so it's not going to be an effective wrench. But that little tiny groove is what holds the clip. And you can see the little split here in the tool. Basically, it allows this tool to stretch open. Let's see if I can get that on camera. It's hard to see. But basically that little piece, you know, it's split there. So this split there is to allow for the end of that um, holder to expand a little bit and hold the E-clip in. Because when I was first trying to figure out how to use it, you know, the clip seemed to fit into 2.5, but it wouldn't hold on to it. So I was like, ah, oh, this thing's stupid. But it's actually a 2 millimeter clip, and it says so in the Tamiya book, so that made me look at this. And the little clip just did not want to go in there. So basically what you have to do is you have to find the correct side so that groove is showing and then you set it in and then just gently, very gently, you don't have to like pry on it or anything, but you just very gently pull it open and the clip just falls in there. And now that little annoying clip that flies across the room all the time is stuck in the end of that. So we'll fold this one out of the way. Now, for your shock shafts, I'm sure you guys know, there's the inside and the, or the lower and upper groove for the clips. So I still, you know, just tend to smash those on like that. So basically what I do is I just get the clip lined up. Whoop, see, that's the problem with them. They fly all over the place. So I get the clip lined up and then just put it down to where the clip is on the bench and press down and it pops right on there. So that part works great for the bottom one. The problem is, once you put this on there, you can no longer press it on the bench. So once you have your piston on there, then all you do is you take your tool and you wanna, so like I said, the mark side is quote up for loading the clip. But what you wanna do is you wanna flip it over and then you just find the slot and press it on and you know, you're holding, basically the groove is holding that clip and the groove is holding it down so it can't go flying up at you. So we'll load up the other one real quick. And like I said, you just kind of get it started on one side, 
pull it apart just a teeny tiny bit and now your clip is in there and won't come out. You drop your, shit, your um, piston on there onto the shaft and then just push and it snapped on there and you know everything is um, rotating around the shaft. You always want to make sure that once you clip these on that it rotates around freely to make sure that you know the clip is fully seated. If there's resistance it may not be fully seated. But, you know, super easy and a whole lot easier than fighting, you know, lining this up and trying to smash it on there. And, you know, you slip and it goes flying across the room. And, you know, you only get, you know, one extra um, sometimes in the kit. So, you know, if you sing one across the room, you know, you're really nervous about putting those other ones on. All right. Let me back the camera out real quick. Well, and that's it. It's a $15 tool, which, you know... I get it. You may not have 15 bucks extra to spend on a tool. Maybe you need 15 bucks to spend on shocks. You know, I get it. I have done this for decades. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with, you know, a pair of needle nose pliers and a little bit of concentration, a little bit of luck, and, you know, your shocks are built. No big deal. But if you guys want to make life a little bit easier and, you know, if you're like me, older and, you know, eyesight's not what it used to be, you know, a great little tool to have in a toolbox, especially if you've got to build, you know, a bunch of kit or a bunch of shocks, or, you know, if you have one of those kits to where all the hinge pins have the Eclipse on them, you know, this could be a time saver and a lifesaver from trying to figure out where it went flying. Anyway, guys, quick and easy one for you today. I hope you liked it. Um, you know, I'll stick a link to a couple of sites that have this in stock. You know, they're not affiliate links or anything, just trying to help you guys out. Everybody out there, you guys be happy, be healthy, be safe, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.